Guys, welcome, welcome, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker. I guess it'd be a good idea if I put the camera on me today. <laughs> um, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, today, I got a couple of fun stories to start off with. They're a little bit more positive message. I know many of, uh, of you guys have said, hey, man, like, can I get some advice? Can I get some feel-good message? I got a feel-good message today. Um, and, and it really boils down to a lot about, I'm going to talk about height, which as a guy that's around five, six, five, seven, depending on how thick my socks are, um, and, and my dating, which, uh, believe it or not, yes, at five, six, I have dated. I know it's crazy. A bald, a bald, ugly, short guy, uh, can still date. And, uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is personality and we'll jump right into it. Um, a quick reminder, quick reminder, I am going to be, I am going to be doing a live stream. TikTok, the new carnival show, the new carnival sideshow. I'm going to be doing a live stream probably tonight around, I want to say 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Um, Pacific, which would be like UTC plus seven. I'm either going to do that tonight or tomorrow night. So if you're online, uh, I haven't scheduled it because I, I'm not sure my, my pup's been a little sick uh, and I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. He has this thing where he eats and then he acts like he wants to throw up for a long time. And it only happens like once every two weeks. I don't know if it's his food. I don't know if he gobbles it down and gets a lot of air. I don't know what's going on, but we'll get it figured out. Anyway, I'm going to be doing a live show uh, either tonight or tomorrow. And I'm going to be doing that on YouTube again, just so I can reach the masses. I've still got a movie night planned for those of us on locals. And I'm going to be doing an odd man out segment, which is about the news. I'll be doing that over on Locals as well. And then I'm going to be uh, probably doing either another movie review or talking about something else over on my B-Sides channel. So I'm trying to get a lot more content out for you guys. Um, and and uh, be, be patient with me. I got to figure out all this stuff as I go. I'm used to just recording videos, putting it up, and then doing other work. All right. So on to our main story here. Uh, is dating really harder for short guys? Um, in, in summary, I will say yes, but... And that doesn't mean that necessarily you're at a disadvantage. And the reason why I say that is because as a shorter guy, okay, um, I had to try extra hard when I was in sports in high school. I mean, at playing football, um, I was the punt and kick returner. I was a halfback, and they used to joke that I was the quarterback uh, because I was half the size of our other halfback. <laughs> um so I, I played running back position and um, and I played free safety. So we had a very small football team. And so we played kind of gridiron. I don't know I don't know if they call it Iron Man football. I forget what they called it. Basically where you're on offense and you're on defense and you're on special teams because our, our high school team was so small. And needless to say, we were pretty gassed out by halftime. So I don't think we won a single game in the two years that I was a varsity football player. But but I had to try extra hard. I had to hit the gym extra hard. I had, to, I had to put out more effort. And when it comes to dating, the same thing holds true, that if you are not a, a traditionally good-looking, tall guy, um, one with a, a lot of charisma and, who, and who's very funny, you do have to try very hard. But there's something to be said for that. Because while the, one, one thing the pickup community does get right is that there are certain ways that you can act and that you can be and, and that if you're comfortable in your own skin, you have a very large advantage over somebody that's maybe very good looking, tall, but kind of awkward or not funny or uh, is very, I don't know, um, is very needy. And, and so when I was younger, and just a little bit of a personal story here. When I was younger and I was in the military and I was in high school and I, I did a couple of semesters in college, that was all around the early 90s. The most we had was a pager. And you didn't, I didn't even be able to afford a pager until I got into the military and actually had a steady income. Um, not many high school kids had pagers. So you'd still pick up a landline because cell phones didn't exist, and you dial somebody and leave a voice message or leave a message with their family. You had to get comfortable talking to parents before you even maybe talked to the girl you wanted to talk to. And then when you met people, it was in clubs, it was in bars, it was at social events, it was out in the real world. And so as a, as a guy that ha always had to make the first move, as a guy that didn't have women just coming up and being like, wow, you're so tall and dreamy and handsome and I'd love to go out with you, you had to learn how to, so you get rejected 
I will go to as far as to say thousands of times. Now, now picture that today versus young people today. Young people today maybe get blown out on Twitter or, or another dating app, or maybe get blown out in real life three or four times. And they're like, man, this dating thing's not for me or it's unfair or, and, and I'm not saying it isn't kind of unfair in many ways, but if you wanted to date, if you wanted to get some action with a girl, there was no choice. You had to buck up and you had to learn how to talk to girls. And that's how they did it in my generation, which is Gen X, like the oldest, kind of the older tier of Gen X. That's how we did it, is make a shot, get burnt down, make a shot, get burnt down, and learn after time after time after time. And it was work, it was work. And so with that though, um, I wasn't bald back in the day, um, and I certainly had a few less wrinkles and I was probably about 30 pounds lighter. I was in pretty good shape. Um, with skill and being kind of self-depreciating and being funny and being kind of interesting, you could get girls' numbers. And yep, some of them would flake out or never return your calls. Um, but other times you could be relatively successful. So when they say is, is dating really harder for short guys, it is, but only if you're playing the online game. Only if you're, only if you're participating in that. Um, if you still talk to people in the real world, and you're interesting, and you're funny, and you know how to come across as a very confident person, you can still go out with girls. So those of you that are shorter, um, I know it's very easy to say, you know what, no one, everybody wants somebody that's over six foot tall, but that's not the case. They're putting a dream list out there. It doesn't mean she won't leave you someday for a taller guy, but it also does mean you might be able to go out on some dates, maybe have a little bedroom fun, and have some good interactions with the understanding of dating today basically means they're going to trade you in for a better model at some point uh, until they run out of choices. So just keep that in mind. I'm not saying that it, it's not exceptionally tough. I'm just saying that it is possible. So let's get into the first story here. And the reason why I wanted to read this, um, this is from Inside Hook. Um, this is, do short men actually have more sex? And this is from uh, just what, a week ago. New study says short men have more sex than the tall ones. Tom Holland can confirm. All right, well, that's kind of a, I know you guys are like, yeah, that's Tom Holland. He's rich, he's a movie star. Uh, he's a good looking good looking guy. He's, tw I think, 26. Um, yes, but again, they don't write articles about average, average everyday guys. They just don't. No one's knocked on my door and said, hey, I'd love to interview you about your dating history. Uh, but what they do is they do have they do make a good point in that a lot of the guys that I knew that were ta were taller and good looking or maybe were successful. Um, they were used to asking a girl and being told yes a lot, but if they were shot down or if there was a girl they really liked that ended up cheating on them or leaving them or, or turning them down, it was way more devastating to them than it was to someone like me. The reason being is because I had gone through the turn down after turn down or having a girl step out because she found somebody that was taller or better looking or something. So, so my, my frame, my mindset was much more positive. I was much more confident in myself. Um, if somebody, I don't know, said no to me or threw an insult at me, I could laugh them off easier. It, it wasn't as impactful to me as a person because I kind of built up those walls, those calluses from going out and exercising and, and trying to uh, bang up against that wall called dating. So they say uh, uh, from the main article here, and this is written by a Kayla Kibbe. And I, I always like reading articles from women because as a woman, um, and she says, well, I, sure, I date short guys or short guys can date as much as taller guys. I, I think that's believable. It's probably as much believable as a short guy like myself saying, oh guys, you can do it. She says, just a few days after defending short kings everywhere for publicly slamming gender height standards, Tom Holland is setting his part, spreading the message that short guys also uh, get down and dirty. Last week, Holland, who is five foot eight, so he's even taller by, than me by a couple inches, and just barely makes the short king cutoff that usually falls around five nine or so, drew attention to a scientific study claiming short men have more sex than their taller counterparts after liking an Instagram post from Lad Bible about the research. The telltale, like, the telltale like made headlines shortly after Holland uh, shot down speculation that the two inch height difference between himself and his five foot 10 beau, uh, Zadea, 
Zendaya, was cause for concern, calling such gendered high expectations a stupid assumption at an event earlier this month. Now, I will say this much. As a guy that is 5'6", I have dated women that are five foot tall, five one, all the way up through to, I think five, maybe five ten, five eleven, might have even been six feet tall. I know she was very tall and she liked to wear four to six inch heels. So, so when we went out, she was taller than everybody at like six foot six. So when we slow danced, her bobs were right in my face. Um, and she and she was a, I think she was a dancer and a, a model. Um, but not professional model. It was like for a JC Penney's magazine because she worked at JC Penney's and did modeling for them. Um, and, and it didn't last long. I mean, I think we dated maybe a month, month and a half. And then she found some guy that found wrote, that drove a Ferrari that was built like a linebacker and she decided to date him instead. Now you can say, well, that's a fail. Is it though? Because at the time I was fine with casually dating. I was fine with just kind of going out. I was 22, I think. So I was fine just going out and having fun. So if it fell apart, does that really affect me? No, but in the meantime, I got to hang out with a, a pretty good looking and, and fun woman. So there's the pros and the cons of it. I, I guess for you guys that say, yeah, but I'd like a long-term relationship with a beautiful woman and you know, well, okay, yeah, you've got your risks there. So I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's all wine and roses, but I am saying it is possible if you keep your expectations grounded. And again, for someone like me, I had to have some skill and the tall, good looking guys don't have to have that skill. But again, the difference is when something goes wrong or something bad happens in the relationship, if you've gone through this a couple of times, it's not new. You can maintain a, a good mental attitude about things, right? So just kind of keep that in mind. Uh, they say at this point, the whole thing is starting to feel a little, we get it, Tom Holland, you're a hot movie star who has lots of sex with your hot movie star girlfriend, despite suffering the grave tragedy of being an inch or two below average height. Still the study uh, to which he gave his double tap of approval does seem to revise a widespread cultural assumption about male height and sexual prowess. Spending any time at all on a dating app and you'll find at least as many men flaunting their over six foot status as there are women demanding partners who meet that standard. Naturally, this would seem to suggest that taller men are playing the game with a significant advantage and are probably more likely end up in bed with a woman of their choice. Now, I'll say this much again. I think they have it on easy mode, but uh, does anybody really get skilled at a game where they're playing it on easy and somebody else is playing it on like Dark Souls level, like crushingly hard? At the end of the day, the guy that's playing the Dark Souls difficulty on all areas of life versus the guy that's playing on easy mode at life, um, yes, he does have it easier, but the guy that's learned to play it in the trenches, the guy that's learning to play the, the tough game, then when it comes to a new game that comes out or a new challenge or something that's new to both people, the guy that's used to the difficult mode will be like, hey, I got this. Like I've been through stuff like this before. The guy that, that's had it on easy mode, it's going to be a challenge to him. So that's one way I want you to kind of frame it. And you may disagree, but I can tell you as a, as a short guy, as a guy that has gone bald kind of early, I started shaving my head around 28 years old because I could see it was thinning on top. And there is still a little hair, hair there. Uh, but being short and being bald and, and having various other disadvantages, I've, I've genuinely had no problems in my life dating when I've wanted to. The difference is, yes, I have to align my expectations that I may not get a 10 or a nine like a 10 or nine guy does, but it doesn't mean that I can't find somebody cool and fun to hang out with, someone that I find attractive and someone that we have a lot to, to be compatible on. But again, you're playing on tough mode. And that's the thing that I think most men see today is they see the, the person playing on easy mode and they say, well, that's it. I have no chance, I'm out. And that's not how it works. It just means you have to work a hell of a lot harder if that's something you want. And if it's not something you want, you can say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna divert this energy to something that's more meaningful, to something that means more to me as, as a single guy, which might be skiing. It might be uh, hitting the gym or, or doing CrossFit. It might be uh, running ultra marathons, like, or whatever floats your boat, right? You can put that energy towards something else. But if you do make the decision to date, it can, it can be done. It's just gonna be tougher for you. But the toughness will teach you how to handle a lot of things, salary negotiations, uh, getting a job, being a good interviewer because you're quick on your feet with thinking. 
it can give you a lot of advantages. They say, while this may seem surprising, we might reasonably attribute these higher levels of sexual activity among shorter men to a little thing often referred to as the Napoleon complex or the notion that short men may be driven to compensate for what they lack in height through other means or asserting their masculinity. For some men, this may mean driving fast, fancy cars. For others, it may mean racking up sex partners. This might mean that short men spend more time and energy actively seeking uh, sex partners, or it might just mean that other compensant, compens, compensatory traits they adopt to boost their masculinity, confidence, nice cars, great style, etc. Simply make them more attractive options to potential mates than some 6'3 lunk retire, uh, relying entirely on his height. I think she makes a, a decent point here in that uh, when I was dating, okay, back in the days when I was dating, I kept myself very physically fit. I made sure I had a good sense of style. I dressed very nicely. I don't think I've been out a pair of jeans or sweatpants kicking around the house or maybe a pair of uh, basketball shorts in four years. <laughs> I just don't, I don't own suits anymore. I don't own ties anymore. I gave all that up when I left the work world. And, but I had a nice watch. I dressed well. I made sure to smell nice. I made sure to keep my my beard and my head shaved very clean. I made sure that um, the car that I drove was always washed, that it was clean on the interior, that it was, even though it may not have been new, I at least kept it up to a very good quality. And I, I took pride, but here's the big difference. I also made sure that if I was talking to somebody, I always had, especially if I was flirting or uh, trying to get a girl's number or trying to gauge if she was interested in me or not, I always was was analyzing the conversation. Like she'd say something and I'd quickly think, okay, uh, is this is she indicating some interest here? Is she kind of uh, brushing me off? And because I had been through that dance thousands of times, it makes it very easy to know when you're talking to somebody in the real world, not online, of, hey, maybe there's a little something here. Maybe the, maybe there's something for me to pursue or, okay, I can tell I'm boring this person or she's not interested or she's giving me the brush off. And when you learn to do that dance very quickly and very well and very skillfully, then you know when to take your shots. And that's a lot more often than I think a lot of guys realize where the tall guy that's just good looking and maybe has women flirting with him that make it very obvious they're interested in him he may have an easy time spotting that, but the other opportunities that he has, he may not be able to see. And I know this sounds crazy to some of you guys that haven't been out there or haven't dated or not, but it is a real thing. And, and I can attest to this. And again, I'll, I'll tell you more of, of different stories here shortly. They say, um, they say, of course, there's always the possibility that the shorter men in this particular survey uh, the Napoleon complex manifested in a greater tendency to exaggerate their coital frequency, but I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. It's also worth noting that the entire concept of the Napoleon complex is retrograde and heteronormative, blah, 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 blah. relying on the insulting assumption that short men must, or at least should, be insecure about their height. And any confidence they have is simply an overcompensatory uh, a projection rooted in that insecurity. I don't actually know whether short men have more uh, sex than tall ones. And if they do, I can't say for sure why. Maybe it's overcompensation for some to, to some extent, or maybe it's just that short men are less likely to be entitled a-holes who think being a certain height is all they need to do to impress some partner. Call it overcompensation if you want, but as a woman who has had uh, sex with short men, tall men, and mid-sized men, I can promise you that whether you're 5'3 or 6'3, uh, effort is always sexy. Now, I have a, a doubt I, I have my doubts unless she's maybe 5'1", and that way 5'3", and 6'3", are both taller. Um, I, I, may be, I may doubt her, either her selection or uh, maybe she's just incredibly easy and will sleep with many men. I don't know. I don't know in this case. But I can tell you this. Um, a lot of times, especially on my videos, I very, if you notice, very rarely talk about my own personal interactions with women, my own dating successes and failures, and about my life in situations. And the reason why I try to avoid that is, number one, everybody that's on the internet, 50% of them lie. The other 50% probably aren't telling the truth. And so you have 100% of people, no one wants to come on and do a video about dating and say, dude, I get blown out all the time. 
and nobody wants me because I'm a short, bald dude. <laughs> no one wants to say that, right? So many times people will, will exaggerate their successes. And so were I to say, hey, as a young guy, I had a lot of success and I was able to do blah, blah, blah. It becomes very, um, it becomes very braggy. And that's usually where you as a viewer are like, whatever, dude, and you turn that person off. So I will tell you this though, I, my friends considered me and I considered myself very good at dating. What they didn't know and many people didn't know is that a lot of guys that are shorter and that are okay looking, they don't have to be great looking, they're always taking shots. They're always talking to people. They're always putting themselves in situations to where maybe they could meet somebody. It becomes a full-time job. And I know this because when I was 22, 23, 24, 25, in those ages, it was my full-time job. It was very important to me. And I think a lot of it did have to do with when you're short, I got picked on a lot in school. I got teased a lot in school. So it made me want to perform very well in the gym. It made me want to perform very well at sports where my high school could see me uh, as an athlete because all of them looked up to the tall quarterback who was six foot two, a good looking guy named Tom, who was dating the prettiest girl in school. And everybody looked up to him and he was the cool hero. He was the alpha Chad. And as a young guy, I wanted to, I wanted to have that, that, the, that, recognition. I wanted that praise on me. I won't even lie about that. So I worked very hard in the gym. I, 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 I think in, in total, I ended up having like seven or eight varsity letters because I participated in a sport every season, whether it was tennis, whether it was, what else did I play? Football, whether it was cross country, whether it was swimming and diving. I, I did a lot of sports. I wasn't really good at any of them. And, and that's the, the hard part. Like I didn't excel in any of them. I was middle of the pack in about all the sports that I did, but I tried all of them and I did okay in a lot of them. Did it get me the attention and, and the, the embellishment that I desired? No, I was pretty much a nobody in school. But after school, because I had tried so many sports, if somebody said, hey, we're going skiing, I know how to ski. Hey, we're gonna go uh, swimming, I know how to swim. And, and I could go on the diving board at the local pool and do a one and a half or a one and a half gainer or, or, or reverse, I guess you'd call it, or one and a half inward dive. Like I could do some pretty cool dives that got me just a little bit of attention. And at the, again, at the time, I thought that was important to make me feel good about myself. So maybe what, there was some Napoleon complex in there. But I wanted to show that even though I'd been made fun of for being short, that I was just as good as anybody else. And so I had to try extra hard. Then when I got in the military and then when I started getting into the dating world, I'd see people and they'd have girlfriends. And I never had a long-term girlfriend when I was uh, in the military and when I was doing other various young dating things. Uh, and then I did for a while and then I went back to being single because again, she left me for a guy that was kind of a Chad. But because I had been through so many breakups and so many um, turn downs and been, I've been laughed out of a room for asking somebody out. But when you go through that, it hardens you to the point where you just don't care if that happens to you. And then all of it's a goof and then all of it's fun. And then if you ask a girl out and she blows you out of the water, you can genuinely have a laugh, not act like you're laughing, not pretending you're laughing, but genuinely laugh it off. Like whatever, I'll go just go hit on somebody else. And through trial and error, you learn what works and doesn't work and you can't have success. And as a matter of fact, I would argue that because guys that are not having all the advantages have to work so hard for it, they, they can have more success than, than the tall guys that are waiting for something to fall in their lap if you are comfortable in going out and actively searching. But here's the thing that, that I think she forgets to mention in this article because she's never been a guy that's, that's gotten turned down a lot or had problems in dating. And here's the kick of it to get really good at it, to have a lot of opportunity, to get really comfortable in your own skin, to have a great time in, in dating and flirting and picking up women, it, you're going to have to dedicate a lot of time to the art. They say it takes 10,000 hours, uh, but if you do 10,000 hours of anything, you can become a master of it. Some people choose guitar, other people choose on picking up and flirting with women. You can become a master of it, or you can get very good at it. But the thing is, what is the end result? 
what is your what do you get out of it? If if it's I get to sleep with a lot of women or I got to get to sleep with a lot of pretty women or I like I get to date a lot of women, is that what you want for your your life? And if the answer is yes, then go for it. Go for it. But looking back to my early dating years in my 20s, had I taken all the time that I took in trying to figure out women and how to talk to them and flirt with them and go on dates and and all these, if if I had put that into the guitar, I would be an amazing guitar player. And now at my age, if you ask me, which would you have rather done? What you did in all the dates and the craziness and whatever, or would you rather be a master of the guitar? I'd probably say I'd rather be a master of the guitar or a piano or photographer, or skateboarder, or surfer, or whatever. The only takeaway that I took away from all that time in dating, because the dating's all gone, the women are all gone, God knows what they're doing. But the one takeaway I did take away from that is two things. I say one takeaway, two things. Number one, I'm fearless. When it comes to talking to people, when it comes to uh, interacting, when it comes to being... um, uh, interviewed now that I'm on YouTube, um, but I'm just fearless. I'll go up to anybody and talk to anyone about anything. You can plot me in a room, a party of 200 strangers, and by the end of the night, I'll probably have half a dozen phone numbers, and I'll have made some good friends because I just know how to talk and read people very well. So that was a good takeaway. And number two, it taught me that dating and romance and all the other things with lots of women and having lots of quote, friends who aren't really your friends, but they like hanging around you because you're funny or interesting. Those people don't matter in your life. They're, they're not going to be important to you. They will come and go. The guy that said, oh, we're going to be friends forever, come and go. As a matter of fact, I had a friend of mine I haven't talk, talked to in close to probably four or five years. He lives in California. He messaged me the other night and he's like, hey man, what have you been up to? And we texted back and forth. And I said, hey, uh, you're free for a phone call. He said, yeah, I'll give you a call tomorrow. That was three days ago. He hasn't called back. <laughs> So I'll have to call him and remind him. But he was really excited three days ago to talk to me on the phone. He just hasn't picked up the phone and called back. But that's how guys are. And and I'm not hurt or bothered by that. And when I call him, I'm like, dude. He's like, oh, yeah, man, my bad. I forgot. I was busy with, with some other stuff. But you learn very quickly that having all this popularity and having this attention and having this validation and having all the women that want to sleep with you really is not going to get you very far in life. Because if something happens that takes away that validation, i.e. aging, balding, uh, breaking your back and being wheelchair bound, um, all the different changes in life will change your circumstances. And if you've had it on easy mode all your life and then your circumstances change, you're going to have a hard time. But if you've had that chaos and you've had that kind of wild craziness and you've had to kind of adapt to it and you've gotten very good at that, nothing throws you for a curveball. So that's really the the good takeaway I got out of being able to date and talk to women and and being comfortable in every situation. And to, to be honest with you, that's gotten me very far in life. I'd still like to be a master of the guitar, but when I go in for an interview and they ask me a question I don't know how how to answer, Well, I do kind of know how to answer it because I've been asked tough questions that put me on the spot a thousand times. When you're talking to a girl and she gives you a crap test, right, and you have to quickly come up with an answer or know how to handle it, that makes you also kind of know how to handle a crap test in an interview. So I don't know, guys. Um, I'm not saying necessarily that this means that you're going to have an easy go of it. It's going to be tough. But I hope you do take away that uh, if there's anything that's tough for you in life, you can do the sour grape method, which is, ah, oh, I didn't really want it anyway and screw it and I, it's, I don't have a fair shot at this, no matter what it is. Or you can say, you know something, this is tough. It, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to suck it up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to embrace the suck. I'm going to work my way through it. And at the end, not only will the rewards be better for you because you went through such toughness to get it, but you'll be able to handle the, the, the other chaos that is thrown your way and be able to handle things without emotion, without going crazy, without getting depressed, without getting butt hurt about things, you'll be able to work through it. I'd like to hear you guys uh, what you think of it. Um, let me know down below and uh, let's jump on to, um, I got one more. I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to put the links down below this video, uh, but I'd like to know what you hear about this and then we'll, we'll do our dating profile of the day. Uh, here's the other one. This is what they referred to, the Lad Bible. Scientific studies show short men are better partners and have more sex. 
Uh, I'm not going to read through the whole thing because I don't want to go too long on this. Uh, but they 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 say here that um, all in all, the study concluded the shorter the man, the better partner he'll be. Researchers aren't completely sure why this is, but they think taller men uh, may be more confident in their appearance and therefore think they're above doing uh, household work, other tasks, showing their emotions, et cetera. Um, I don't agree with everything in the study, but I'll leave it down below if you want to read it. And this can be, you can look at this as the same way, whether you're short, whether you're maybe a little bit overweight, maybe you're bald, um, maybe, I don't know, maybe um, you've been in an accident and you walk with a limp or um, maybe you've got some other challenges out there. I think this goes through uh, through all challenges in life is, is that good mindset. So keep that in mind. All righty then, uh, let's move on to our dating profile of the day. All righty then, our first one here. Um, I don't know if the person, I don't know if the person that um, that edited this put the uh, uh, girl face emoji over the photo or not. Obviously, that's not a real face. <laughs> but I, or she might have done this. I, I don't know. I don't know. But she's, she looks to be in pretty good physical shape. And she's 22. And she said, listen, listen, guys. I've seen my competition on here. I've seen it. I No, I do not have hairy armpits. I'm not a pan, tri, zy, cis, whatever the crap they call themselves. I have limited piercings, and I don't want to work at Walmart for the rest of my life. So please, drink water from my island after swiping in the desert all day. I'm not calling this one a loss. The reason why... I wanted to bring this, bring up this dating profile specifically is because she even recognizes that a lot of the other women out there are not good, are just not good. And she's saying, look, guys, I have limited piercings and I can't tell from her T-shirt, but I don't see her face. Uh, I can't tell if it, there's the chesticles that are that are pierced. But anybody that says, like, I have piercings, they're usually not talking about their ears. Um. I don't see any tattoos. She looks like she's kept herself in relatively good shape. And underneath this emoji, you probably can't see it. It looks like she has regular blonde hair. So she's saying, guys, I am normal. But I've seen the competition on here. And they have hairy armpits. And they're pie, pan, tri, si, step in time, I, giant, step in time. They're, they're all the acronyms or all the pronouns. And I and I want to and I work hard. So hey, come give me a hit. And I gotta agree with her. But when when the women are now saying, "Wow, the other women on these dating apps are awful," I you got you gotta know it's bad. You gotta know it's bad when even the other women recognize it. And uh, oh, that's that's the only one I have. Okay, that's my next video I'm gonna be covering here later on today. Uh, and that's uh, let me just do this overlay. That, despite what women say, personality matters the mo most. That's the other one I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about for you guys, is that um, is that I I do believe personality matters the most when it comes to dating. It doesn't mean that it's on easy mode. It doesn't mean that you're gonna have as pretty or as beautiful a woman as the model guy that's got the six pack who's six two. But it doesn't mean that you, you, you're you not going to find a quality partner. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be alone. Again, it just means, is this something I want to invest in? Is this something I want to put my energy in? So we'll talk to you on that one. Uh, I'll record that one here after this one. I'll maybe upload them both today so you guys have a feel-good moment if you want. Or maybe it's just more um, confirmation that, uh, hey, you know what? I don't want to put that much energy into it. Dating's not for me anymore. Mm -hmm.